Welcome to the Common Financial System and the Data Warehouse training. This training will provide you with basic navigation topics, but it will also prepare you for the upcoming training you must complete in order to gain access to our financial systems. Closed captioning is available. Select the CC button in the navigation bar. At any time, if you experience difficulty with this training, please contact our Campus IT Support Center at 909-537-7677. Let's get started with our training. The topics included in this session, basic login, navigating in CFS, adding, editing, and deleting favorites, saving searches, page components, new window, navigating in the data warehouse, and signing out. I'll briefly highlight basic login using MyCoyote or CSYOU.calstate.edu just for a moment before we move on. There are two ways you can access the Common Financial System and Data Warehouse. You can log in from our campus portal, MyCoyote, or the preferred login to our campus financial systems is using csyou.calstate.edu. We will show you both logins, but the preferred login is csyou.calstate.edu. I would also like to highlight when you are using CFS or the Data Warehouse, it is recommended that you use Firefox or Chrome for your browser. If you experience any issues with your browser on your local station, please contact your department technician. Let's begin by logging in. We will first demonstrate how to log in from the MyCoyote portal. Then we will highlight after navigating to csyou.calstate.edu, we will access the Common Financial System. From the university's home page, we navigate to Coyote Corner, then we select My Coyote. After we've selected My Coyote, it brings us to the My Coyote sign in portal. You will enter a Coyote ID and password and select Sign In. Let's review. From the campus home page, go to Coyote Corner and select the My Coyote hyperlink to access the campus systems. The next few slides will demonstrate entering the Coyote ID and password, then selecting the Sign In button to access the campus systems, also known as our campus portal. Once we've arrived at the Campus Portal page, you will select the CSYOU Home link. This will bring us to the CSU Home page where we will select the San Bernardino Campus. You can also access CSYOU by navigating directly to csyou.calstate.edu. After we have successfully logged in, to CSUSB's portal, we will next log in to the CSU portal. Here we will begin by selecting the campus. We will select San Bernardino. The CSU campus login page will direct us to the San Bernardino authentication page you will enter your Coyote ID and password and select Login. Logging in directly at csyou.calstate.edu will save you a few steps. The CSYOU page appears. From the CSYOU home page, we will select Tools and Services. Next, 
Under Financial Tools, we will select Common Financial Systems link. Let me warn you, in production, this page is a little sensitive, so don't get frustrated when you're navigating from Tools and Services to the Common Financial System. You will get the hang of it. The Common Financial System page appears. Here you will select the CFS login or the CFS Data Warehouse login, which we will talk about a little later. We will select the CFS login to access the Common Financial System. On your local station, you will want to save this as a bookmark or to your favorites in your browser. This is the Consolidated Financial System home page. Before we move any further, let's review the home page. The system uses pop-ups. Therefore, you must have your pop-ups unblocked or turned off when you're in CFS. These steps vary depending on your operating system, so we ask that you contact the Campus IT Support Center at extension 77677 or contact your department technician for assistance. We also have the information available at the Technical Support Center web page. To begin using the system, let's review the home page briefly. Let's look at the links at the top of the page. On the far left, you have Favorites, Main Menu, and to the right, you have Home, Add to Favorites, and Sign Out. Notice that these are drop downs to the far left, with, which provide cascading menus, and to the right, those are links. I'd like to highlight for the Sign Out link, you need to sign out of the CFS system in addition to signing out of the CSU portal. We'll go over that in more detail. We've talked about a few things briefly on the main menu. Let's look at a couple of the collapsible menus that are available when we select the main menu arrow that's pointing down. In the following demonstration, we're going to review how the menus cascade. You can navigate from the main menu to the purchasing folder cascading menus will open and you move further along into the system. Also notice that breadcrumbs will show up at the top of the page. You can also navigate from an existing breadcrumb. As mentioned previously, you can navigate from the breadcrumbs at the top of the page. By selecting the home link, you will be returned to the main home page. The next topic is adding favorites. The next couple of slides will demonstrate navigating to a particular page in CFS. Once I've arrived to the page, I will demonstrate how to add a favorite. I'm almost there, but I would like to highlight the processing icon that's showing up in the top right corner under the Help link. This icon, it's spinning to retrieve data. The system provides two options for saving favorites in CFS. You can use the Add to Favorites link in the far right of the screen, or you can select from the collapsible menu option on the far left of the screen. In this demonstration, we will use the Add to Favorites from the far right of the screen. Next, the system will prompt you to use the default favorite name 
or to create your own, then select OK. There are three basic steps to adding a favorite. First, you want to make sure you navigate to the page you wish to select as a favorite. Second, you select the Add to Favorites or use the Favorites link in the main menu. Next, you will name your favorite and select OK. A confirmation message indicating your favorite has been saved will display and select OK. The system permits us to edit, delete, and organize our favorites. From the main menu, we will use the cascading drop down option labeled Favorites. When you select the Favorites cascading menu, we will see the recently used pages that we've navigated to, My Favorites. You can add to favorites, there's an Add to Favorites link available and Edit Favorites. We will select Edit Favorites in just a moment. I want to highlight any added favorites are listed underneath the Edit Favorites link. The next few slides will take us to the Edit Favorites page. On the Edit Favorites menu, notice the favorite title listed to the left. To the right you see the sequence number. And there's a navigation bar at the top where we could see favorites, personalize, find, an icon with a red arrow. That represents an Excel download. And the navigation arrows that can take us through several lists. That navigation bar you will see throughout the system on different pages. Back to edit favorites. So you can rename your favorites here but you can also arrange them or organize them based on sequencing. So you would add a sequence number in the order that you wish them to appear and select Save. You can also delete your favorites from here, select the minus button on the far right column, then selecting Save. We've reviewed how to add a favorite, editing, deleting, and assigning a sequence number to each favorite. Remember to save your favorites. The order assigned to your favorites will be saved locally. And remember that this is not the same as adding a bookmark or a favorite in your browser. This allows you to add favorites within the PeopleSoft Common Financial System page. Our next topic is using the Save Search. Repeated searches can be saved for future reference on specific pages. We will navigate using our favorite. The next few slides will demonstrate the convenience of having our recently used or our favorites available. To implement Save Searches, we're going to begin by identifying the criteria we frequently use on specific search pages. We will also review shortcut icons as they come up. To begin our save search, I'm going to add criteria. I'm going to select the magnifying glass, which is the look up icon. Notice in the business unit I've identified SBCMP. I selected the lookup icon, the magnifying glass, and it brought us to the lookup business unit dialog box. I've selected SBCMP. You can also use the percent sign as a wild card when searching anywhere in the system. In this example, we used SBC percent. After entering the wild card, select the look up button to proceed with your search. By using the percent 
wildcard, notice that our test results for Lookup Business Unit are different. It only resulted with SBCMP. So you have various options when you are searching throughout the system in various fields. Remember that you can use the Lookup icon to look up a list of information. You can use the wildcard to look for specific fields of information. And the advanced lookup allows you to search with additional information. Typically, we do not use the advanced lookup, so we will not cover it in this training. Now that we've identified our business unit, let's add a purchase order date. The information I'm adding will be saved for future searches. I'm going to use the calendar icon to search for a date. You can also enter the date into the field box directly. The calendar icon opens up a calendar where we will select a specific date. Once you have identified the criteria you wish to save, select the Save Search Criteria link. After selecting the Save Search link, the Save Search As page appears where we can name our search. In this example, I've named it Test and select the Save button, then return to Search. We have completed the steps to save a search. Let me show you how it works. From the home page, I selected my favorites and I selected the favorite on the page where we saved our search. The criteria we saved under our saved search that we named test is available. Under use saved search, we have an option to select the save search that we created. Since you can create several save searches with different criteria, the drop-down menu makes it convenient. You may also delete your save searches by selecting the save search from the drop-down menu and select delete. From the search page, we'll return to the home page to review page components. We will navigate to the ProCard Inquiry page to view page components. As we are navigating to the ProCard Inquiry page, I'd like to remind you that this course provides navigation basics. As you move through this course on to the next course, you will learn about the details for each process. So let's go to Page Components. We will begin our search using the last name and the first name. On this page, we see some familiar features. We see our breadcrumbs, we see our safe search, we see our row navigation, and we also see a column header for each column that is in our results. Anywhere across all of the modules, you can sort by your column headers. If you select the column header, it'll generate a sort. In this column, the first date we see is December 24th. By selecting the invoice date column header, our data has been resorted. The pro card inquiry I wish to look at is in March, so I'm going to select the link in the invoice date. First, we will review under the distribution header the links that we previously mentioned, personalize, find, view all, the Excel download, and then the navigation within the rows. 
as you can see this navigation bar is available throughout the system and throughout all of the modules. Each page has different components available in CFS. We're going to focus on the components that we can see at the ProCard Completed Inquiry page. Notice at the top left there is a tab. Some pages have multiple tabs that you can select. So you can select each tab that's available. You can select any of the live links to view additional data or to run a process. We have a new window link. When you select the new window link, another window will open. You can have two windows open simultaneously. Actually, you can have multiple windows open simultaneously in PeopleSoft. However, it is important for you to remember that the system will automatically sign you out after 15 minutes of inactivity. The timer begins from the very first window that is opened. Ensure that when you are done using the additional windows that you X out of them, providing you leave one window open that will allow you to sign out. I previously highlighted the download icon to Excel. Remember, when you select this icon, you must have your pop-up blockers off. Otherwise, the page will not launch. If you have any difficulty launching an Excel download, please contact your department technician. We have successfully downloaded our information to Excel. Microsoft Excel will open and prompt you if you want to open the file and we would select yes and the spreadsheet will open. We have covered a lot of basic information and we don't expect you to remember everything. Well just enough to pass the test you're going to take. We've completed the CFS portion. Next we will begin the data warehouse. Again these are basic navigation points to help you in the next courses you will be required to take. Remember to sign out of CFS. You also must sign out of the CSYOU portal. However, we're going to continue in the portal because we're going to look at the data warehouse. We are back at the CSYOU. We just logged out of CFS. And now we're going to navigate to the data warehouse. From tools and services, we're going to navigate to the common financial system to access the data warehouse login 11G. Please note when you are navigating to the common financial system or the data warehouse, the navigation can be a bit sensitive. So when you select tools and services, you want to slowly drag down and move over to the right to select your links. We will select the 11G data warehouse environment. Authentication is required and select login. We have arrived at the data warehouse homepage. The menu bar at the top is static throughout the dashboards and the reports. You'll learn more about dashboards and reports when you take the next training. To return to the home page, just select the home link. We have just selected the dashboards drop down menu. The dashboards are arranged in alphabetical groups. Notice that you have a most recent link, which also is highlighted in the center of your home page. Your most recent history is available to you. The dashboards available to you include Administrative, Manage My Budget, Firm GAAP, Management Reporting, Operational, and Sponsored Programs. 
As you move on to additional training, you will learn more about these dashboards. So you'll select the group to reveal the link to the dashboard. Then you'll select the link to open up the dashboard. Navigating with your dashboard using the open feature is another option to access your most recent dashboards without having to go back to the home page. In this example, we selected our dashboard drop-down, then we selected the GAAP link, which opened up report filters that will allow us to set up our reports. You will learn about the details on setting up your reports in the Viewing Financials training. In this example, we have selected the Management Reporting Dashboard. As you can see, the dashboard attributes differ. We will select the Home link to return to the home page. You can also navigate in the Data Warehouse by using your Recents located in the center of the page. We selected the Manage My Budget dashboard from the Recents. As you can see, each dashboard has different attributes. The Manage My Budget dashboard has additional tabs under the Static menu bar. Hovering over any of the links with the cursor will tell you information about the report tab or the dashboard, whatever the topic is. Do not select any links that say drill down. It is very important when you are using the data warehouse that you never select the drill down link. Notice in the dashboard drop down you see plus and a minus icon. You can select the plus icon to expand the information below the heading and use the minus icon to close it. We have navigated back to the home page by selecting the home link. Under Recents, in the middle of the page, there's an open link and a more drop-down option. Select the open link to navigate to that dashboard. Select the More drop-down for additional options. Notice in the More drop-down you have additional options. One of them, the Print option. When you have a dashboard open, you can also print or download to Excel by using the additional option to the far right of the screen. We have the option to print, export to Excel, refresh, which you will learn more about in the other training sessions. Throughout the dashboard we'll see different features. We'll see drop-down menus, arrows. In this example we can see that the arrow or caret pointing down opens up the row for additional links. The arrow pointing to the right closes that additional information. We have covered a lot of information. While we don't expect you to remember all of the basics that we've covered today, we just wanted to introduce you so that you can become familiar with the information you need to successfully complete the next level training. It is imperative that you remember to sign out of the data warehouse. And don't forget, you also need to sign out of the CSYOU portal. We have successfully logged out of the data warehouse, and now we will sign out of the CSYOU page.